It has certainly been a year for Boeing. Concerns about quality and safety, a labor strike. Part of the reasons the shares are down 45% year to date doesn't mean there are not still opportunities to be found in the aerospace sector overall. Juliana Faircloth, Vice President of Portfolio Research with TD Asset Management, here to take us through it. Great to see you again, Greg. Welcome back Thank to the program. Thank you for having me. Uh, we're going to talk about beyond Boeing and aerospace to begin with, but at first, give us a bit of an update as to everything Boeing's been going through and where we're at right now. Sure. So your introduction, I think, covered a lot of it. It's It's been certainly a challenging year for Boeing. If we rewind back to January, we, we started the year off on not great footing. That was when the Alaska Airlines door blew off its hinges. Uh, which added to quite a long list at this point of quality control issues for the manufacturer. Um, that also prompted the FAA to get a little bit more involved and have a lot more scrutiny around the production process, the delivery rate, uh, and manufacturing process for Boeing. More recently, as we know, has been very topical. Boeing had a much longer than expected strike for about seven weeks. There were 33,000 machinists from Boeing on strike, which caused further delay in deliveries. Um, and if Boeing is not delivering planes, planes aren't going out the door, cash is not coming in the door. And so the cash burn rate at Boeing has been quite significant, so much so that the company had to raise about $24 billion in capital uh, in the last couple of weeks just to shore up and plug that, that hole from a balance sheet perspective. So challenging year to say the say the least. A lot of news and the year's not done yet. They do have a new CEO, a new board. They're trying to right the ship. Pretty daunting task though ahead of them. Absolutely. So Kelly Ortberg is the new CEO, uh, which was announced this past summer. Uh, he is an outsider of Boeing, but a, an insider of the industry, having held a uh, CEO position at Rockwell Collins, having been part of United Technologies. So well regarded and probably a positive step to bring in an outsider, given the persistent challenges the company has been facing. Um, and so on the one hand, improving operations and the effectiveness of, of the supply chain and the manufacturing function, um, that's kind of one task. And then the challenging task is turning around what seems to be a cultural issue at Boeing. And that, that is a tough, uh, tough task, so we'll be watching that closely. Right, so there's work to be done at Boeing, and investors, I guess, could be forgiven when someone says, we're going to have a conversation about aerospace. It's like, oh, Boeing, Boeing's doing horribly. There's more going on than just Boeing. Start taking us through some of the other companies and why maybe some of Boeing's woes might actually not be that bad for the others. Absolutely. So it's been an, an interesting time, and, and one might think, okay, well, Boeing hasn't been delivering any planes. Airbus has also been kind of slow on the delivery side. That must mean the entire supply chain has been a mess and all of the suppliers out there have been having a lot of challenges. It's not necessarily the case. Um, I've brought a chart that shows a year-to-date stock performance of Boeing and a few others within the, the commercial aviation, aerospace and defense kind of end market. Uh, three companies there, GE Aerospace, Howmet and Heiko. You'll see a, a huge divergence in stock performance so far this year, which has been interesting. So. Boeing's woes are um, certainly challenging for the entire supply chain, but there are companies that have found ways to benefit, and, and a big way that they have done that has been through uh, exposure to the aftermarket. So while Boeing hasn't been delivering new planes, we do know that global travel has been rebounding pretty strongly. And so planes are in the air circulating, um, which has driven a lot of uh, aftermarket activity, meaning services, spare parts, and companies like GE, Howmet, and Heiko have benefited a lot from that. Yeah, when I saw that graph, I mean, it's pretty stark in terms of Boeing's stock performance, and we knew that it would be well below the zero line. But some of the others, like, quite a strong rally. When we start to break down some of those spaces in the sectors, what are other ways of looking at it beyond these three companies, or maybe in these three companies? Deep and For sure. So I think if we think about the supply chain um, within commercial aerospace, you've got the OEM, so that's Boeing and Airbus. Their business model is they take in supplies from something like 20,000 different suppliers wow. and they assemble the plane. They're more of an assembly um, manufacturing company than you know, making all of their own parts. They bring a lot of things together and send the planes out the door. Um, within the supplier space, there's that 20,000 suppliers. There's a lot of companies that are publicly traded that, that work within that space. And I would put the engine manufacturers is their own sort of subset of the supply base, and that's where you have a GE Aerospace. GE Aerospace is one of very few global engine manufacturers. They power something like 75% of the global fleet that's out there. So a really strong business, 
and all of the engines that are out there become an installed base for GE to run their service business for engines. So that's been a great business. Then you have other suppliers and then you have more aftermarket focused companies, uh, which would be Howmet and Heiko. Um, I don't know if there's an interest in kind of walking through those ones as well. Oh, yeah, most definitely, yeah. That's what yeah, we're here for. That's exactly. what we're here to look beyond Boeing. <laughs> for sure. So uh, Howmet is an interesting company. Um, they do a few different things. Aerospace and defense are a major end market for them alongside some other general industrial and trucking end markets. Um, where they have found their niche really on the engine side is providing airfoils and they are one of essentially two players that does that. Um, so they are actually agnostic to GE selling a new engine to Boeing versus selling spare parts to um, a maintenance and repair shop that's repairing engines on behalf of, of airlines. Heiko has its own business model that's a lot more aftermarket focused. Um, I like to akin that business model to a generic drug manufacturer. Um, what Heiko does is they manufacture parts that they get approved by the FAA through a parts manufacturer approval program or PMA. And as um, airlines are looking to cut cost, maybe they have a 15 year old airplane, um, some of the components of the overhead storage bins or some of the components of the washrooms have become defunct. They'll turn to a company like Heiko that sells these FAA certified products, but sells them at a 30% discount to the original manufacturer of those products. So all of these companies are benefiting from that aftermarket and growth, structural growth in demand in different ways. Sort of a recurring revenue model on the engine side, a agnostic just growth based on volume for a Halmet, and then a kind of volume and cost generic play for a Heiko. Interesting stuff there. Overall, what are you thinking about the aerospace sector? I think you have something to show us here too in terms of a picture. For sure, yeah. So I've brought in a chart. I think if we take a step back, um, global travel has been a structural growth story that we've seen since the 90s. So the chart I've brought here is global available seat kilometers, which is essentially just a measure of, of global airline capacity. And you'll see that there's been, been decades of really solid growth there, taking out uh, obviously the, the impact of the pandemic there in 2020. You'll see a nice secular growth trend up and to, to the right on this chart. Um, those are the types of, of trends that we like to see. There's no reason to believe that this trend is going anywhere. So as investors, I think it's important to think about, okay, this is a trend that we'd like to tie ourselves to. There will be winners and there will be losers. I was going to ask you about theme. the risks, right? If people are looking at this theme. What are the Absolutely. Risks? Yeah. So there's winners and there's losers within that theme. It's been a Boeing has been a difficult stock to own and, and many have shied away from it for that from that for that reason. Uh, but there are plenty of other ways, whether it's more directly through the supply chain of Boeing and Airbus. It could be airlines if you're so inclined. It could be even outside of the more industrial space. You could take a look at something like hotels, um, Airbnb, Booking.com. Um, but in finding a, a strong secular trend like the one that we see within global travel uh, is a nice way to tie yourself as an investor to, to a theme and a growth area.